Hi, welcome back. I'm Julie, and this is Jen Ryla. Hi. <laughs> so I'm your today, coach, former yeah. coach. Jen was my <laughs> former coach in 100K Inner Circle. We're, uh, we're both ex rank makers, and she was a 100K Inner Circle coach. And you want to say hi? Just say hi. <laughs> hi. I'm, I'm, I'm excited and scared. I'm happy, excited, and grateful that we were doing this today. <laughs> We're going to do something big. This is a big deal for Jen. So you might know Jen from Last Suppering Ray. <laughs> She's gone down in history. I'm making light of it. I love that it's a verb. I love that it's a verb. <laughs> he kept going on that she was saying hate and hate. And she said, can you hear me? And then he had to say yes. And then she was like, I didn't say hate. And she's made a really good video about that. It's on her YouTube. And I also did a reaction to it. So today we're going to react we're blind reacting. Neither of us have seen this since this came out in 2019. And Jen was my coach. She was like advocating for me to teach people about TikTok, but it was going over like a lead balloon. So I did this training in Inner Circle and um, and it was about content, content strategies. So this title is called Exclusive Strategies from a Content Queen. That's me. I'm the fucking content queen. <laughs> And you still and, are. You still and this are. was given like as um, in rank makers. Actually, do you want to explain what this activity tracker bonus is? For sure, people? I can do that. So, I, and I don't know if you want to get into the fact that we had to name it strategies of a content queen because we had strict rules we needed to follow. We were not allowed to talk about TikTok. We could only talk about creating content. They did not want anyone to know, I guess maybe this is speculative, but yeah, it seemed like they didn't want anyone to know this about the success that you were having individually on your own on TikTok. So this was part, this training was done inside of 100K Inner Circle Ray's like coaching group, which is part of his funnel First, people start off as a rank maker, then they get funneled into 100K Inner Circle, then they can get funneled into Millionaire Roundtable, and so on and so forth. And this training was first offered in Inner Circle because you were an Inner Circle client of mine, and we were encouraged as coaches to find stories from our clients that we could then share inside the group to kind of create this like illusion that everyone is winning so then people see this and they think well you know julie's winning and jennifer's winning why am i not winning there must be something wrong that i'm doing so i noticed that you were winning on TikTok, and i said what can i interview you in the group because i was taught to do that as a coach and that from that training those trainings are then offered two people inside of rank makers, which is the first step in the funnel, in Ray's funnel, like I mentioned, uh, as a free bonus for filling out what's called the tracker. And the tracker is, it's another illusion that makes you think that you're tracking your numbers, but you're not tracking profits. You're not keeping a profit and loss statement, but you're keeping track of all the people that you're reaching out to. And then Ray would use those self-reported numbers to then act like, again, look at all the people winning because of rank makers and because of us. And it was all, there was no way to ascertain whether these numbers were, were truthful. Sometimes people just like threw numbers in just to say that they uh, filled out the tracker. And sometimes, you know, when you're in a high control group like this, you feel like, well, maybe you're doing so many things that it kind of all gets convoluted. Like, I think I, I think I prospected 20 people, but wait, I, and it, it's, it's the, the accuracy of the numbers is it's, it's very inflated. That's, I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. So then he would use those numbers to say last week, you know, uh, 500 people reached out to, or people prospected 500 people in their business. They followed up with, uh 700 and i'm inflating those numbers even more than it actually was but if you filled out this tracker 
you were then offered this free bonus training. And the reason why, in my opinion, that he used inner circle trainings is to then kind of like have this grab of look at what they're doing in inner circle. So then you would be curious and you'd go into the next step in his coaching funnel. And even though you got access to the trainings and then what would happen is they dangle this carrot. You'd feel like you were missing out of from the people who are in inner circle. And then you would join inner circle and you'd realize it's all the same shit that you're getting. <laughs> but it was a long answer, but I hope hopefully because there's just so much to explain. People need to know that. And thank you so much for going into that. This is important for other rank makers, too, that are watching this and people involved in the 100K inner circle coaching. As you start to question and start to exit, like you can see the community is awesome. We helped, we helped each other then and we're fucking helping each other now. And this yeah. is about amplifying each other's voices and giving you a platform to be able to speak out and share your story and perspective as well. And I think it's powerful that we can look at our content, our own content, because I know, um, I know I feel I want to protect people still involved in rank makers. I don't want to react to them. I want to protect them because I believe they're going to get out. I feel comfortable. And it could have been, it could have been either one of us. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen this training, but you know, I, I know that it's going to be the hun version of me, the coach version of me, which is a very different version than what I am now. And mm -hmm. also I know what I expect to see is, um, somebody who's being pulled in two different directions, probably both of us, because there's the way that we want to show up because we had a real desire to help. And then there's the way that we think we have to show up to fall in line. And I know that like, I was so excited about the success that you were having on TikTok, but then when it got shut down, I thought, oh, well, maybe there's something wrong. Maybe maybe i'm not finding the right stories maybe i'm doing something wrong as a coach maybe i'm focusing on the wrong things and um but you i think what i'm gonna see is so, a, a, a version of me that is very obedient and i'm a little nervous <laughs> i'm the same but you know I, I haven't seen this either like i just played the first couple and then like a couple of seconds and you're gonna see like you're going to see Ray come on right away. Cause he like has to put himself in front of every fucking thing that ever happened. Oh yeah. Trigger so, warning. <laughs> trigger warning for Ray's face. It'll be like this close to the camera. So just be my, it, 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 out of nowhere. It's like, holy shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if you will, if you like this, get into 100 K inner circle coaching, but you can see the dynamic. I think you're going to see the dynamic between us because we have had a yeah. friendship that was with this weird culty dynamic where you were my coach. I was your client. We're in a cult. I got to be so happy and grateful for everything. I'm like, but I, I am happy and grateful. There's reality. Yeah. In that. And I was also, I remember before we had this um, training, I felt really excited and honored to be able to do this in, to be asked to do this in 100K inner circle coaching. I'm like, wow, they really see value in this. But I remember I was asking permission from you as to what I was allowed to talk about yes. in terms of content creation. And I, I remember had a, that too. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I remember I'm like, okay, so I just won't do that. I just had to, like, it's wild now thinking back and the quality of this, I'm looking just at the screenshot of it. It's like, mine looks like 480p. Like, it's so fucking bad. And this is on a Zoom call. And I'm always going to tell people, I'm going to be blocking out um, the name of the account, the Zoom account that you're on, if you're wondering why there's going to be a square blocking that out, because um, you were using like inner circle coaching, you know, account or whatever. We just want to protect the identity of people like in there. Although sometimes I name fucking names, like, I guess I want to do the best I can of just not showing so I want these people to get out, you know? It's hard. It's hard because, yeah, it's just hard. <sighs> and, uh, one more thing. Um, this was also, this particular training, all the activity uh, tracker bonuses, this was from December 9th to December 15th. So like you were explaining, we had to turn in our numbers to Ray on this tracker. We called it, come on, tracker attackers by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. 
And so we would all like dutifully do that. Not, not all of us, because he would always get really angry because there would usually be between nine to 11% of people that actually reported. That's what he said anyway, but he still uses these statistics. You can look on his website, on his like bios, wherever, like on YouTube and that we've helped 130,000 rank makers rank advance and 792 people. All those numbers are like what Jen said about being self-reported. So the veracity of it, who knows? We're just doing yeah. what we're told. So between nine to eleven percent of rank makers, apparently, according to Ray, when we were in rank makers, when I was in rank makers anyway, would fill out this thing, and then if you did, you'd get rewarded, and you'd get an email saying, uh, rank, uh, "Activity tracker bonus for this week." And I was really excited, and I'm going to put this up. Like when I edit it, I'll, you're going to see right now the email, and then also it's like um, from exclusive strategies from from a content queen so this is high praise you know i'm getting like a lot of attention and then i get like this status in the group as well and like and it's respect from my peers pe people that i really respect within rank makers um okay, so you, real yeah. quick one thing one thing i just i want to say about the tracker i just went to higdengroup.com forward slash tracker you can go there and look at it yourself but yeah, you put your first name, your last name, your email, what network marketing company you're with. You filled out how many people you prospected that week. Um, did you add any new paying customers placing their first order with you? That's a change. Did that you, is a change. I don't remember that. Yeah, that's a change. Um, did you add any new paying customers placing their first order with you? Uh, how many customer, if yes, how many customers, how many different people did you follow up with this week? That's new too. But anyway, um, reported all of this. The other thing that I, I was just going to say is you also reported if you rank advanced. Oh yeah. Um, and if yes, how many times? So that was, that obscured things too, because in certain companies in the compensation plan, right, you, you, they have a ton of different ranks. And I think it's very interesting that they're not saying like, how much profit did you make this month? <clears throat> and then this whole shtick was, uh, we're get, our inner circle coaching or our, our coaching can help you get to six figures. You never reported if you made it to six figures or showed any proof. This is all just like, did you rank advance? There's no, there's no information telling you, did they maintain the rank? What does a rank advance mean? There's just so much missing information. Anyway, I had to look it up just to see that because I couldn't remember everything you reported. That's really cool that they've, it's it's cool that you looked it up and it's really weird that they've added those new pieces of like data points. So then he can, you know, go on about yeah. more numbers and statistics. What, what all these things that rank makers are doing for people. All right, are you ready? I, yeah, I'm ready as I'll ever be. No, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm going to like go this. So I'm going to just show you this first. It says exclusive strategies from a content queen. Activity tracker bonus from December the 9th to December the 15th, 2019. This training was taken from our 100K Inner Circle Coaching Program. Want to learn more about joining the Inner Circle? Simply send an email to blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to um, make this full screen and then we'll just, if you want to say something, Jen, as we go, just yell or whatever, and I'll pause it and away we yeah. go. So keep in mind, um, Ray's face is going to fill the screen right away. <laughs> All right. Ah! Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. Hey there, this is Ray Higdon and congratulations on updating the tracker, way to go. Uh, today you're gonna get a very special training from our 100K Inner Circle group. And this is our coaching program that we have to help people get to $100,000 in, okay, in the network market. Wow, there we go. I'm sorry, already. Claim. Yeah, the income claim, but also the Inc. 5000 plaque perfectly positioned in the background of the video. Remember that was always on purpose. Yeah. But yeah, the income claim right there is saying that it's it helps people get to hundred K in their business anyway. Yeah. Marketing business. And so uh, if you like 
this or if you'd like more information on our 100K Inner Circle coaching, uh, where both Jess and I go live in there uh, once a month. And we have some amazing coaches there that actually will get on the phone with you, hold you by the hand and work with you very, very closely. So that's what they sell, hold you by the hand and work with you very closely. So these were like half hour phone calls I got in. It was like once every two weeks for a half hour phone call. And then it's like, you're not being held by the hand. We were given assignments, um, which I was looking back over my old emails, like we were talking about before, where it was basically doing what the Ray Daily was during the live video in Rank Makers, doing the same activity, prospecting more people and watching more of his trainings or different trainings within Inner Circle Coaching. <laughs> yeah, and they talk about this in Scientology too, where it becomes self-indoctrination, where you're expected to read like all of the L. Ron Hubbard books and, and texts and everything. And you're supposed to look up words if you don't understand them. And what happens is, you just end up consuming so much of his content and you need like more and more and more. And it just becomes this, it's like, it gets put on you because he'll say, well, you should be out prospecting. You're in learning mode. Stop watching all the trainings. But yet the coaches are directing you to watch the trainings because they're being told by Ray, we need people to, uh, we need people to be watching our content, right? We want to get the views up. Like, why aren't people on live when I'm on live? So it's just another messed up piece of it where you're like, you're, you end up just further indoctrinating yourself, but then it's put on you. It's like self-indoctrination. Jen, how many clients did you have on like average? The honest answer is I, I don't no over the course let's let's see at a time mm -hmm. i because they always changed yeah um i think i started off working tuesdays and thursdays those were my coaching days and then it became monday tuesday thursday friday and then it became i was taking on the difficult clients and working like whenever they were available and then we were doing Ray dailies and we were doing extra videos. Um, so there was all of that. It's hard to separate. Started, yeah. I think when I started out, I was seeing like seven clients a day. So probably 14 clients a week, um, every other week. So like 28, like 30, we'll say 30, I had 30 clients. But by the That's end, a lot. Was, That's a lot. Yeah. by the wow. end, it was probably 50 to 60 clients. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Would this, would well, you I say took on two extra days? So oh. I went from just Tuesday and Thursday to Monday and Friday. And then also difficult clients whenever <laughs> they were available. I mean, they, yeah. I don't know. 50, so 50 to 60 clients on top of all the extra work that you're doing, creating additional groups, uh, doing the daily live videos yeah. in Rank Makers, also additional training in 100K Inner Circle Coaching, also hosting or being part, adding in value into groups of that guided goal power group or whatever it was called. All of that were just kind of like it snuck in one at a time at a time. Would you say, and I don't know if you even know this, but would other coaches have a similar course load like you with 50 to 60 clients a week? Yeah. Yeah. It, it started off with you created your own schedule. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, it was pitched to you that this was just like MLM. Mm -hmm. This is like part-time on your time. And, but you were always vying for like essentially raise attention yeah. or the of the group you want it these are all high achieving altruistic people that want to show up powerfully they want to do their best work and so over time I think you felt like if I just do more the chances of me having more clients ups my chances of having a really good success story for the leader and so I think that's what ends up happening you think I, if I just work with more clients I'll get that success story that will not only elevate my client, but it'll elevate me too. And uh, yeah. 
Absolutely. And I know you've mentioned this before in a previous video that we've done. And also, I, I think you may have mentioned this um, in an interview, maybe one of your podcast interviews, one that you did with Roberta Blevins on Life After MLM, um, where you mentioning how much you were getting paid per session. Would you be, are you okay with like talking yeah. about that a little bit? Okay. Because um, a lot of these people are, are spending a lot of money, like $3,000 for six months of coaching or $25,000 for a year of coaching. I don't really know. It goes all over the place. Can you- 800 like, US a month. 800 US a month for coaching. How much were you getting paid and where did the rest of the money go? So I, I would assume the rest of the money went to Ray and then the medallion coaching, the group that he contracted through, which is based out of Utah. Um, we started off $22 a session. So some sessions were half an hour. Most, I'll say most sessions were half an hour, but some were an hour. And I worked there for two years and then fought to get a raise. Um, so I never got a raise. And after two years, I finally was like, I need a raise. Uh, when I left, I was making 25 and I was one of the higher paid coaches. Um, and I, and I had to ask like for it. And were you getting paid for any, I know like this is like getting off topic, but I think it's, <laughs> a, I think this is a good conversation. Like, it's like, I wouldn't have yeah. thought of these things. I think people will find really, it's really, um, enlightening. Um, because how you're taking advantage of how the coaches are being exploited, their work, their labor is being exploited. Um, were you paid for all the additional things that you were doing in rank makers and 100 K inner circle coaching? The videos? So the short answer is ab the short answer is absolutely not. However, what I will say is if we did a Ray daily, which is a Ray daily is his live video that he does every day in rank makers. And sometimes if he or his wife, Jessica couldn't do it, the coaches were called upon to do it. There was a schedule, but oftentimes it was very last minute. It was like, who can do the Ray Daily this weekend? And again, we're wanting to please him. We're wanting to show up power, not just him though, even like his people that work even closer to him than the coaches. It was like, um, yeah, I want to show up. I want to prove that I'm a hard worker and that I'm here for the greater mission of the Higdon group. But often it was last minute, like, hey, who can take the Ray Daily Saturday? Who can do it? Oh, Ray is going to be on a plane. Who can do it tomorrow morning? Um, so we could then submit time that would count as a session. Here's the thing, though. We were supposed to keep it under 15 minutes, uh, the Ray Daily. That was it was kind of beaten, at least into me, because <laughs> I always seem to over talk at least that's what i was told that um you know don't go over the 15 minutes and that was treated like a coaching session now if you went over the time of the session it's not like so if i did a ray daily that was like 30 minutes i wouldn't get paid for an hour you weren't paid for the time it took you to create the training you know what i mean um anytime I will say that anytime your face was like on camera, mm -hmm. you were paid additionally, but you, I'm constantly checking Facebook messages from my clients, emailing them. I'm constantly keeping up to date in the inner circle Facebook chat threads and Voxers and email chains and all of these things. And none of that, just like in an MLM. So, well, I would do be doing this anyway, or, you know, I, I look at me, I'm such a good worker. I'll, I'm just, this is, this isn't about a paycheck. This is about providing value. And so it's very easy to just write off all the things that you're doing or to gaslight yourself and feel like, well, maybe that means I'm not grateful if I ask for more money. Like I went back and forth with myself. It wasn't until another coach who has since left told me, you absolutely can ask for a raise. And I, but I felt like asking for a raise would feel like it was ungrateful. But anyway, so, so you know, I just wanted to pull up a calculator and just see um, 
because, you know, we never did this. We never added up anything when we were inside. And I'm just like saying 50 people at say just 25 bucks. That'd be like 1250 bucks a week. Just say, would you say that would be more than what you were making in our bond? <laughs> oh, no. Like, or would so you a, be a, a week? A yeah. week? A week. So let's yeah. say in a month, let's just say that'd be 5,000 bucks a month in coaching calls. Let's just, that's just saying we're so just then using Maybe it account. wasn't that many clients, honestly. 50 so clients. I, Cause I, I definitely months. didn't make 1200 a week. It was, it was probably around a thousand at the okay. high end. Yeah. Okay. So that's but, a pro, like high end would be like about $4,000 a month then in being an MLM coach with like inner circle coaching. Yeah. Um, it was about the same I was making. Okay. In, well, you say making profit. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, I was, yes, I was making more as a coach, I think, because okay. that, that gets blurry too. I definitely had $4,000 paychecks mm -hmm. in my Arbon business, but profit, I don't know. Right. Yeah. It's hard to talk numbers when we're getting out of these high control groups. Everything yeah. is blurred up and the memories and all that too. But I think it's good to give people an idea of how hard you're working, what you're doing, this sheer load of clients. And it's like, it's hard to even pinpoint what you're doing because you may have a client call, but you're, you were um, given the illusion of autonomy, but then very quickly it becomes you're at his raise beck and call. What yeah. can you, we need a uh, raise on a plane today. Like, you know, he had planned to be on the plane. It yeah. wasn't like last minute flying somewhere. He's going to go to like speak on some stage somewhere. So an, an inner circle coach needs to drop what they're doing and be like so happy and grateful and honored that they're going to speak in a group of 16,000 people of rank makers and do one of his trainings. And and then plus following up with your clients and your clients. I know like me, I, I'd feel bad, but I'd want to share with you something like I got a customer or what do you think of this? And it's like, that's all unpaid. And that takes time. And I, that was your that was personally my favorite part was connecting with the clients off the call privately in, in Facebook messenger, like hearing how they were. I loved that part of it. I didn't like being recorded on a call and where I felt like I had to follow. Cause I really did care about them and, and I wanted to hear how they were doing like exactly. And I, I also want to say too. So when, when I stood up to him in the meeting and, you know, I was excommunicated within 24 hours, lost my job. Um, I had already left Arbon, but like, if I could go back, like financially, it wasn't the soundest decision. I probably should have created some sort of financial exit strategy. And unfortunately, like it fell, we, fortunately, unlike a lot of people, we did have a savings built up. But I, I also think it like a lot of these people that leave these groups and you think, oh, you, they speak out, they're just being a hater. Like some of them have lost significant incomes, multiple income streams, <laughs> multiple income streams. I'm triggered by that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but, it, and then it's like, what, what are you getting paid for by speaking out? I know there are people that monetize anti-MLM content, but you and I don't. So yeah. I'm just say yeah, that. Yeah, fuck all. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> mm. I don't want anything. And I know like, you know, feeling the similar, it's like, it's, it's important. We got our, got our, yeah. And it's nothing against those that do. All I'm saying is that, you know, people are, people have lost incomes. They've lost friendships. There's definitely loss involved. So if you think someone's speaking out for attention and for all of these, I mean, I don't know, go ahead. Yeah. And think what yes. I don't care. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Go ahead and think what you want because it doesn't, it doesn't add up and it doesn't make sense because the fallout yeah. from speaking out, it's, it's, yes. it's crazy. There is no benefit. There's no fucking benefit of the benefit. This is like the right thing to do. And it's, it's really hard. And you lost there's, a lot. There's no you, cult leader paying. Yeah. Yeah. That's there's right. no cult leader paying us $22 an hour <laughs> a session for this. <laughs> and when you do a session, you're not going to get paid anyway. <laughs> Uh, for 15 years, nobody's been paid. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I think that's, I think, all right. All right. We'll get back into this. We, we haven't got past his face, but we're getting closer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're going to get there, Jen. <sighs> okay.
Okay, I'll add this up. Feel free to click the, click the button down below or go to rayhigdoncoaching.com to learn more. But I hope you enjoy this training. I think it'll really help you out. Uh, hello, everybody in the inner circle. Woo! Um, thank you so much for your patience. We ran into my amazing guest and I. Um, who really needs no introduction, but we ran into some technical difficulties and um, we worked through it. We got through it. Um, that's part of being an entrepreneur, right? Is being resourceful, working through the kinks, and we totally did that together, Julie. So I'm so excited. We're entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, let us know where you're tuning in from. And I'm going to have you up on my phone because I cannot see, I cannot see the comments. So um, bear with me. I'm going to be checking them on my phone. But I am joined by with none other than the content queen, Julie Anderson. Woo! Who is an OG rank maker. She is also a rock star in the inner circle. And I've been blessed to be able to work with her over the past couple months. And one thing that I love about working with Julie is not only is she super coachable, but she. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. Yeah, every time. Every time I say coachable, people, somebody needs to drink. <laughs> that was considered I, the highest praise, though. Like it was. Yeah, you're coachable. Yeah. Yep. She executes, so she doesn't just listen. She executes, and I, I'm so thankful. And one of the one of the things she's really great at executing on is content and drop some love if you love the content and the value that julie provides or if you've been hey i i still love the content and the value that julie provides that is a true statement but i love i love how i say she you you it's almost like i'm implying you don't think about it you execute which was also another high praise don't don't overthink just do yeah execute yeah. i was so fucking excited to be i'm just like <laughs> i'm like i can't even i look like i'm five years old i'm just like <laughs> oh my God, i love it oh man oh. I, I don't know how this is gonna go i, I remember in pieces you know by something that she has shared, right? So um, before I pass it over to her, she's going to go into some of the ways that she creates content. And then we're going to talk about um, her tips on, you know, why she's so great at executing, which is so important. Like how many people here, isn't that weird? What does that even mean? Like, we're so great at executing. It's like, you're just, it's like that I-L-T-E-E -E thing. Invest, learn, teach, edify, execute, or execute, edify. Yeah. Like, like you're doing yeah. it. You need to do and it again. you're not, this isn't income producing activity either. Yeah. But like, you know, well, and what is? Like, just when yeah. you make a sale. But I know that in my, in, in our bond at least, Income producing activity was like when you were in front of a client or a, a prospect sharing the Arbon opportunity or like sampling somebody. We had like a list of all the like respected um, income producing activities and content was not one of them. Content was like, if you're making too much content, you're that's why you're not growing is because you're you're posting too much on social media. But yet you're expected to do everything. Yeah. And that's, I never signed anybody up from recruiting, like from prospecting. I only signed up people the entire time I was in Mon 8 from my content creation. How that's fucking weird crazy. is that? Yeah. It's insane. 
Yeah. Have you know what? Actually, like real quick. Sorry. They, oh, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Don't apologize. I, I, no, I just for. had a thought, though, because I wonder if they wanted to stifle your content creation because your success on TikTok and finding your own way and your own voice was like a big thing that helped you wake up. Yes. So I wonder, like, once people create a lot of content and they get themselves out there, I wonder if it it helps that like sometimes people then become a cult leader themselves and they become a co a content creation coach and all these things. But I wonder if that's a control thing, because if you're out making a ton of content and garnering your own influence, then you're less likely to remain obedient. I don't know. It's just the thought I had. Yeah. I think that's a, an interesting point. It's a really good point, Diane. <laughs> I'm here all day. That's right. <laughs> overthink content. Or maybe you're maybe you don't think you overthink it, but maybe you struggle with fitting it in or making the time to create your content. Um, that's what we're gonna dive into tonight. And before we get into that, I'm gonna share really quickly three Julie, things. you look like a beauty queen. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like I'm so excited. Like, I wish you would like. <laughs> I had just made a couple of TikToks and I had my, my phone set up because um, I didn't, my computer was just a piece of shit. Maybe this was on my computer. I had this piece of shit computer, POS. Oh, that's probably where it was. And I had it up on my, in my living room. That's where, I, but I was just like, I had already made a couple of TikToks. I was so jacked up. I'm like, I'm going to speak with my coach and in inner circle. I could have just sat there and smiled the entire time and been like, that was the best training of my life, you know? <laughs> I freaking love it. Hey. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, and then uh, I'm going to pass it over to Julie. So number one. I've I said that I'm going to pass it over to you. I'm sorry. I've said that I'm going to pass it over to you like three or four times. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna shut this up is now. what we were taught to do. Like, this is like Ray. This is like how everybody behaves. We're all like little versions of him. <laughs> and the way know, he, and I'm, talk, he does stuff, you know? I'm rambling like him. <clears throat> yeah, he was the one that rambled. You you didn't ramble. When you would do your trainings, they weren't, they were good. Like with what we were taught, we believed it. Yeah. Dude rambles. He fucking rambles. He rambles so much he forgets what he's talking about. Even now, he forgot he was supposed to stop using the word posture. <laughs> See, social media content trainers teach people to make a list of 10 things about themselves and then create content based on those things. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I actually find a lot more value when I create like a list of 10 things and then I, I ask, what do people who also like those things need or want? So a lot of times we can list things like mom, yogi, um, world traveler, uh, you know, like crafter. And then we can all of a sudden think that we have to create this content based on those things. Like, like meaning like, oh, I have to, um, I have to sit, show myself doing those things or whatever. But really what you want to be asking is what, what do yogis need? What do moms need? What do crafters want answers about? And that's really helped me create valuable content rather than just about me and what my interests are. This is fucked up. Cause this is Ray's training like that. Um, think like the fish, not the fisherman kind of yes. but also it's denying your voice. Like, it's you get it like it's a it makes sense in marketing but there's always that twist right like you can't just create content to create there's always got to be an intention and there always has yeah, because, to be yeah no it, because you have to it's the intention is to get people to reach out to you to recruit them deceptively so yeah. it's what do they have questions about and how can i position myself as the only person who has the answer like the answer the secret to life Oh man, it's, and, and I like how I'm not, I don't like at all actually, but I'm making, I'm 
I'm sharing my content tips. Like, Jen, shut the fuck up and let Julie share. Anyway. You're in the... I'm like, it's like I, I have a weird complex about letting you be the content queen. Like, give it up. Anyway, go. It's it's weird. Like, um, this is what it's like in a cult, though, you know? I think this yeah. is really valuable to show people. Especially, like, how in the fuck did we manage to get out and we still have a friendship that's grown even stronger? Like, we had this weird dynamic and we're, like, out and free. And yet, and we can look back and be like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank, thank the Lord. Yeah. You're thinking about your audience. Number two, using themes for each day has been super helpful for me. And you can use the themes that Ray has already provided, like, you know, motivation oh, Monday. Of or maybe um, if you are into yoga, something like meditation Monday. Using different themes for the day of the week or the, even the month. Like I see people. Julie, do, like, your eyes are glazing over and your smile is diminishing. You're I like, know. I'm, like, I'm in cult mode. Like you can see, I was always, I had like, look at that. You're I like, am, you're like, shut the fuck up and let me talk. <laughs> I was, in, I'm brainwashed. <laughs> God. Fuck, so you cringe. can tell I'm okay. brainwashed. <laughs> it's so cringe. Okay. <laughs> of November, but it'll help you stay super focused because one of the issues is, of course, being scatterbrained when it comes to content creation, right? Um, my number three tip for you would be if you can't create, just document. Document what you are doing. If you if you're in a rut and you feel like I can't. You know, I can't, um, I don't have anything valuable to say. I don't, I don't have any specialized knowledge. I'm not, what makes me special or important? Just show people what you are doing. And a lot of times that's just the that's most a contradiction. engaging content. It's I, I completely contradicted myself. The first tip I said, you have all these labels like mom, yogi, et cetera. And people have this tendency to show like what they do instead what are the questions that people who are those things have? Answer those. Don't just show yourself being a mom or a yogi. And then my third tip is to document what you're doing as a mom or a yogi. It's a complete contradiction. Anyway. It's interesting. Ooh, cult, Jennifer. How are you feeling like looking at and uh I'm okay. It's it's just it's crazy. weird, eh? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's weird. Yeah. It's just giving people a real authentic peek into exactly what you're doing at that moment. Just five, four, three, two, one, go. Um, and then my last little bonus is use old content and refurbish it. It's like reduce, reuse, recycle. If you don't have time, Facebook memories is great for this. Just reuse something that you've already done and just, you know, you're hopefully adding people to your friends list. This is a technique we were taught in Rank Makers is to comment on old posts, either that we've made ourselves or you know, other people, but like go back in your memories and then just comment and it will boost it up and people will see it. And that still does work. So if you had like a post that went off or I'm going to be talking about Monate shampoo and, and I'm like, oh, I want to like boost this up again. I would just leave a comment. Some people will, you'll still see rank makers do this and maybe other people in other companies too, but they'll just leave a heart or maybe this was nice or something just to boost that post back up. It could be a post from four years ago. Yeah. And at least, at least <clears throat> in telling people to use their own con copy their <laughs> own content True. versus like, just go repost someone's already made content. God. <laughs> It's true. Anyway, so maybe, or maybe you don't say the exact same thing, but you can at least use the same picture, right? So, um, and uh, the most important thing, of course, is execution. Wait, there's more. There's, wait, there's more. There's always more. And the most important <laughs> thing is execution. After being coachable is execution. Execute. You have to execute. Uh, like, it's so weird that we were these words, you know? Can, okay. Do I... I People should start making bets on when I let you talk. <laughs> How far are we in the video? Oh, I don't. Oh, it, we're six minutes, I think, and twenty-two seconds. In the video. <laughs> 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 well, 
about Julie. She just gets an idea. She doesn't overthink it. She just executes. And I want to pass it over to her because I want you guys here in the inner circle to learn exclusive strategies <laughs> from this content queen. So show some love, show some love inner circle. Oh my God. Look at my computer. My computer, I swear it's like from 1910. Like it's so fucking bad. I'm still so embarrassed. I have a better one now. <laughs> okay. Shall I just dive in? Yeah. Oh you God. just dive in girlfriend. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to share, I thought of another tip as well. And I'll start with that because it's invest, learn, teach that ILT. No fucking way. <laughs> no fucking way. Did I own it? like leading up to this training you're under the impression that you have these parameters you have to follow yeah. and so you're not even giving like your probably your own authentic tips it's probably uh, like what would ray want me to say <laughs> bingo who has bingo it is ILT bingo rank makers bingo bingo execute amy from alabama invest learn teach <laughs> That was like the first thing you said. Hey, 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 hey. What's, up, what's happening? <laughs> Fuck, I'm going to trigger myself into the next galaxy. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I can't even believe that. Oh, this is so bad. That Ray teaches. So that's the first tip for content creation. And anybody can do it. So even it, it doesn't even mean that you have to watch you know like a 30 minute youtube video it could be like you read um you know you google something any i'm so fucking excited i can't even talk look at my face i'm so deep in that was me the entire time this is so fucking embarrassing at least you look normal look at my face jen jesus kind of article you are, you whatever are even like a so excited. you are so excited but i love that I was so fucking excited I couldn't even talk. Hey, anybody can do invest learn teach. You don't have to watch a 30 minute video. You can just watch five seconds of it and then do a video. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, this is so bad. A paragraph from a book, and you could just talk about that. It could be like a one minute video if you're gonna do a video, right? So that's something that's invest learn teach. Um, second thing is go through all the questions that your customers have, or if you don't have any customers, you could go into your team group or, you know, ask, you know, one of your upline or your sidelines about what the common questions I'm taking they have. Notes. And that's like, this is a good piece of advice. And I didn't learn this from rank makers. I learned this through additional coaching. I want I'm to point taking that notes. Out. Do you see me? Oh, fuck. Yes, I do. Look at that. <laughs> We always take notes. <laughs> oh, Even oh mid-interview, we're taking notes. Oh my God, this is awesome. That's free market research because those people already want to know the answers to that. They want to know the solutions to their problems. And that's like free. It's just like given to you. So you could make a video, you could write, you know, create uh, content, write something up, do a funny meme or whatever you want with that. Um, second thing or third thing is um, Tumblr, Pinterest, and Reddit. They have awesome memes. And Reddit is something that I find is really overlooked. They have some good questions that you could just go in and just just take, you know. Reddit, Julie was on like. Reddit. <laughs> I was Reddit, on Reddit is kind of, for, yeah, Reddit is kind of forbidden in the MLM world. Look at you, you rebel. <laughs> In there, that led, led me, eventually I got onto anti-MLM Reddit. That's probably why I want you That's on there, funny. the gateway. But I'm Gen X, I got the, the meme. It's like the moth to the flame. Any kind of memes, I'm like, oh, memes, you know? <laughs> you have become an elite meme creator. <laughs> oh my oh, shit. And just adapt it for your own. Um, or you could snap a like a pic of it and then just create your own little thing. I know I mentioned about Canva. 
I use Canva and it's really easy and you don't have to pay for it. It's really, really easy. So if you had uh, you saw a really good quote, you could just take a picture of it and then just go like write it, write it yourself. Yeah, um, can I can I just interject here real quick? <laughs> just because I want to pull something out. Of you guys. course. So <laughs> she what Julie is talking about with like ILT and these sorts of things, she's talking about actually creating your it. own. <laughs> It doesn't need to be explained. It doesn't need to be explained. These we're talking to rank makers who already know what ILT is. If I explain what ILT is, I am going to pour this coffee in my lap. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know where this is going to go. There might be some coffee lap happening. <laughs> image of it so what i see a lot of people doing is they'll share things from other places and so i'm just gonna let say me just what point everyone's out, doing wrong yeah. <laughs> i see a lot of you i see a lot of you i see a lot of you right now doing this i'm not gonna mention any names but i see yeah you. yeah what you're doing wrong here's what you're doing wrong and i see it i see you when you're sleeping i know when you're awake <laughs> Do not see Ray doing that. If Ray might take a quote from something, but doesn't he create his own image and use the logo of the Higdon Group? <laughs> because he's building his brand. He wants people to remember him. He he gives credit to where the quote is from. <laughs> I know this has turned into full on defense of Ray. Yeah, it's so weird. Weird. Even I'm getting like, tips. I think I thought of one tip. It's ILT, like Ray, Ray teaches. How fucking weird is this? Did I think that something you said Ray would have found insulting or off book or something? And I'm trying to like, you know, like redirect everybody. It's weird to think about. Anyway. Yeah. Maybe from the like getting a meme or an uh, oh, I don't know. Let's just, I don't, I don't know. It's fucking weird though, but it is, it's like full on about Ray. Fuck. Isn't this weird? The trainings always go back to what he does and he doesn't even do this. He doesn't give credit for shit. But when Julie's yeah. talking about yeah. using Canva or using these different Pinterest, she's not talking about snapshotting and copying exactly what they're doing. Make it your own. So if you have a quote, wait, were you, you just use like that back? Why am I speaking for you? Were you talking about <laughs> and I think you were. I'm like changing what you were saying. Because I'm pretty sure you said take a screenshot. I'm correcting you. I'm getting you back in line. You're reeling me oh, back in. I'm the difficult client. They're like, Jen, you got to get, you got to work on her. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, like I you, fucked up already. Face, you're, still, you're still smiling. I, I feel like ready to. Oh my god, it's coachable, <laughs> <laughs> and I execute it. Background on your Facebook, and just write the quote, super simple, and then who said it? I do that all the time. I'm and so I get condescending, and so I just. <laughs> I'm so condescending. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just really want to point that out. We we don't always want to be sharing other people's content. We want people to. Uh... <laughs> I know this is hard. <laughs> this is foreshadowing. Yeah. And then later, <laughs> Ray is like, share other people's content. Oh God. Oh man. Um, you know come to us, come to us. So we well, just wanted to pull that out. Thanks. Yes, thank you. That's so good. Um, next one is what stops you in your tracks when you're scrolling through Facebook? So that could be, again, you not to take the idea and, sh and share it verbatim, but make it your own. So if it's like a, a topic that you're really interested in or something that made you laugh, that can give you an idea right then and there for, for content. 
Um, a next one, this is another one. This is really, this is really cool. Is that because Ray has talked about if you have um, a post, you know, from the past and you go back to it and you comment on it and it bumps up again and he always gets comments on it. So if you've created content that's done really well, like a live video or a post that got a ton of engagement, a lot of shares, there's three little dots in the upper right hand corner of that post. If you click that, you can save it and it'll say save to a collection. So it's easy to find. So then even on your phone, when you click on the saved, all your little saved things come up and you can just go there on another time. You know, if you're like not having engagement or whatever, you can just make a comment on your own post. And then that, that sort of helps with. Uh, and that's, that, that's still, that's true. Yeah. It's I was going to say, these are great tips. That's a good, and fucking Ray tried to do that on this post that I had written about him. And it was like a year or two years later, he tried to fucking bump it up for me to comment, mm -hmm. to reply back to him. I'm like, nope, that, that's when I fucking ignored him. And I responded to someone else, one of my other friends on Facebook. And he says, is this MLM shit? Cause I was already out and speaking out. The fucking Ray was trying to do whatever he was trying to do. And then I'm like, I responded to him. I'm like, like something really fucking irre irreverent, like Jesus fucking Christ. I made it sure because I knew that Ray was going to see it <laughs> and then all his fans would see it as well. I oh. made sure that. <laughs> uh, content creation. Too. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I'm like, I hope I remember everything. <laughs> uh. You are so great, Julie. Oh my God. You are doing great. Okay. And this is uh, the last, the last tip that I wrote down here. Um, I learned this from uh, Carissa Hill. This is so cool. It, she calls it the wee wee test. So you could try when you're writing content, it has to pass the wee wee test. So that means you don't say we or me or I. Try writing everything as you or your. And that's really good because it really attracts people. It's like, oh, they're speaking to me. And it's nice to sort of break out of. This was training that was not about network marketing at all. But it's like a cool thing, like the wee wee test. Like it's kind yeah, of. Yeah, and I, I think it's really the real Julie is coming through there because you said her name. The yeah. fact that you said, I got this from somebody else. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Of it's like me 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 my 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 the wee wee test <laughs> i love that i love that so um i want another thing i want to pull out of you because i know we've talked about it please jen go on about what you want <laughs> and it's weird like the pulling out of isn't that weird that just the way that's phrased too i didn't remember that <clears throat> you um, you get a lot of, you put out a lot of content. First of all, how much content would you say you're putting out every day? Bare minimum. On Facebook? Um, <laughs> well, all platforms. That says how much I'm doing. I doing so fucking much. <laughs> oh. well, They're like, really? this is not the norm. <laughs> but I think you're also, you don't want to talk about TikTok. Yeah. So you're That's clarifying, right. you're clarifying, yeah. like, cause we had established, you will not speak of TikTok. You must follow the rules. Yeah. So you're like making sure, cause you're like on Facebook, like, can I say yeah. TikTok aloud? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just okay. how much content are you putting out? Probably about probably about 15 to 20 pieces of content, but that would include stories too. Sometimes okay. on Facebook, I'll post like five, sometimes maybe six. It just depends. And then sometimes oh, it'll that be was like against the rules. Like oh yeah. Remember he, he shamed oh. you. He, oh you're yeah. So lucky. I'm going through your Facebook, but you're posting way too much, way too much. And my shower rod, I didn't like my shower <laughs> rod. He had a frowny face about my shower rod. <laughs> it's so hard because I just have so many ideas. I want to be like. Boop, boop, boop. He was being a he was being a baby bear about my shower rod. Sorry, I can't let it fucking go. No. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. I want to like fire it all out. <laughs> right. Okay. So that I wanted people to know how much content she's putting out. So I know a lot of people especially in rank makers and here who have followed you and see you 
and, and think, you know, oh my gosh, Julie, she's so great at content. She's the content queen. Now you put out a lot of it. And then the, my next question, I think you know where I'm going is how long have you been doing this? So I started, well, before Rank Makers, <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing, right? And then like once I started with Rank Makers, then I started to just do it every day. And I do do it's a live the video every day for sure. It's the template and that's bullshit <clears throat> because when I did, the only reason I started posting every day was because I started with Mon8 and I emulated mm -hmm. my uplines behavior. I was posting every day and I created a business page, which, you know, in rank makers, you're not supposed to have a business page, but I did because I had, because I started before I joined rank makers, but you lie, like you mm -hmm. massage the truth to fit before well, rank makers. I didn't know what I was doing, but thank goodness I found rank makers. Well, and Ray did that Ray daily training on how to create an effective testimonial. It was like, before rank makers, I was this after rank makers, I'm that. So you're searching, how can I create this story? Cause it's implied that if you create this story for us, you will be elevated. That's all and anybody you wanted. Me. Yeah. You were helping me with this. I I'm pretty sure. Cause I know we've had other conversations where you were like, be sure to say like before and after, like, you know, you were coaching me. So like to get success, because that's what we thought we were doing. You know, it's like, you were, you were he would to tell. Me. Yeah. He would tell, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. No, I'm no, still interrupting you. No, but no, he, no. He would, he would tell us with like, as coaches, what was it like before? Cause remember the screenshots that we have of, like from our conversations and my conversations with Ray, he's asking me, well, what, what, did, what was she like before? He, he may, he forced us into that language of make sure you say what it was like before. And what did, what was it like after rank makers? Yeah. Sure. But I also, um, I started in the last, um, I think it was in April, I started doing actually like four live videos a day. <laughs> and so like across different platforms, it's not all on Facebook. So I, I do it every day, every day. That's true. That was on TikTok as well. I managed to winkle that in. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I got her in. <laughs> oh my God. And you just celebrated your two year anniversary of doing that, right? It's today. Today's my, my two year anniversary of doing at least one Facebook live every day. I'm so excited. I can't, I, I'm like, I don't want to say I can't believe it, but it's like, I'm so excited. Fuck, I'm fucking yes, nuts. We are so excited. Look at that. Like, I'm a fucking blur. I'm like the Tasmanian devil that spins around. Like, I'm so fucking crazy. Like, that's what, ha that's what it looks like when you're in. That's what it looks like. Look at us. Yeah. Oh, it's so fun. You're the devil, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what the hell? They like, I'm feeling the best in my life. Like, I can't even. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. Oh, I can't. We're so happy. Fuck. This is so weird. What the fuck? This right here doing? is the thumbnail. <laughs> you know what? I'll take a screenshot of this right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I got. I got. I got all of this. Like, I even now with your hand <laughs> over top. <here. laughs> this is so awesome. Okay, save this. Okay, there we go. That is saved. That is going out for the thumbnail. <laughs> you look like you're head banging. Like. I like when I said 15 to 20 pieces of content or whatever on Facebook and that, I was going like nuts on TikTok. Hmm. I was doing over 50 pieces of content a day at this time, but I just wasn't allowed to say it. <laughs> yeah, you were like, you can, I think you can tell like the way you answered that, that you were, you weren't sure. Like you weren't yeah. sure what you could say. You were sure. Yeah. Oh man, this is really embarrassing. I didn't you, Julie. <laughs> oh my God. I, that is fantastic. It's like two years. Like I'm like, holy cow. I would never have thought in a million years because <sighs> like who does that? Right? <laughs> I, I see oh, someone, I see God. a comment from such an inspiration. <clears throat> 
observation, Julie. Wow, some great comments here. And you can go through those later. But the reason why I'm asking these questions, okay, so people need to understand that it wasn't about you being super creative or having some crazy specialized knowledge. You made that commitment. Yes. The commitment came first. And like yes. Ray says, Ray says, mm -hmm. when you're committed, you become creative. So let's talk about your creativity because you mentioned, I get all these ideas. And what I love about you is you don't overthink your ideas. So many people have great ideas, but they're so afraid of putting that piece of content out there and maybe getting judged for it. Maybe it's not going to be good. They're not going to get likes. They're not going to get engagement, but you just put it out there. And so I want you to kind of touch on your, your process <laughs> for when you get these ideas. Um, what are you doing with those ideas? So they don't, um, you know, just fall to the wayside. I, I, I asked sorry, immediately. Can I and pause? It, yeah. Like you are so creative and I, I hate that that gets taken away. It's not about your, it's not about your creativity. It's about your commitment to rank makers. So yeah. it's like, it bombs on it. It's almost like a way they take credit for your creativity. Cause you would never be creative if you weren't so committed to this group. That's exactly you know what it. I mean? it's bullshit. Yeah. It's not true. Oh, I think that cause you are so creative it's weird looking oh. back like we have to everything has to fit into the the doctrine the the dogma mm -hmm. the rules and we're fitting like we're contorting ourselves to fit the narrative yeah what i wish i could have said to you is like you your creativity is like the you know like celebrated your creativity, not the fact that you went live on Facebook for two years. Like right. your trust, what you're doing here is it's not that you're committed, it's that you're trusting in your own ideas. That's what led you to the success, not, you know, your adherence to the doctrine, like you were saying. Sad. It is because of rank makers. It's, it's because of all that personal development about like, you know, giving oh. without expecting anything in return. All that has been able to. This is, you know what? This is awesome for people to see what it's like to be in a cult. <clears throat> Everything. Every, like, how many times have I mentioned up, like, um, what we call edification of Ray and rank makers. This is what it looks like. The fucking crazed look. My face. Constant deferring. Gratitude all the time before I was nothing after now everything it's and it's not true that's what they have to work so hard at keeping you in that frame of mind that belief and meanwhile you're still there like like we're both still there we're ourselves we're just we're just squashed it's just like these copies I don't know it's like we're our we're you see pieces of us come through now and then but if I had been good, I would not have been on TikTok. I wouldn't have been creating so many pieces of content. And you wouldn't have, you know, you were pushing it back too, in a lot of ways. This is a good remember example. That it's, a, it's a really good example. Do you remember, like, during um, one of our coaching calls, you had mentioned something that Ray said. And I remember saying to you, because um, I felt safe to kind of jab at Ray a little bit. It was very yeah, interesting. I and I said, I said, Oh yeah, Ray says that ad nauseum. And I was like, Yes, yeah. I remember. Do you yes? I remember I, that. I don't remember. I don't remember what it was, but I do remember we I had do. sort of like this underlying connection, like almost like we both could see through it, but we like weren't quite there yet. Like it's so weird. It is so weird to see how it's played out. So this is like in 2019. This is 2023 now. I remember that phone call because somebody in the group, uh, he was talking about somebody who had criticized him. It could have been a, t a tweet. Maybe it was a tweet he made and somebody was saying that network marketing is a pyramid scheme or something like that. But he was per he felt personally attacked and he mm -hmm. went off. And, and I remember it was like, if I'm remembering it correctly, it was like, you know how he pretends that, um, you know, he's postured doesn't care about what people say, but he'll go on, on and on and on ad nauseum about how this person wronged him or how he's, 
trying not, and you can see that it really bothers him. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I do see that. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah. Oh man, that, that, was, that was freaking bold. I mean, I guess the first time I was ever on stage with him, I called him stupid. So. <laughs> I think that's a worthwhile quick story to to tell right now. People well, so know, I was curious. So how I became a coach is I went through inner circle training myself. And what happens is coaches get plucked out, whoever gives them the best story. And I've shared and we follow that template. And so I shared like my story was before rank makers, I was stuck at a level in my company for four and a half years, joined rank makers in inner circle within 90 days, promoted to a top level in my company, earned a Mercedes and a cash bonus and all these things. Okay. So because that, <laughs> because, <laughs> because that story was, um, because it was so grandiose, right? Um, I was a lowly peon before and now I've got, I'm driving a Mercedes and going on trips and at the top of the pyramid. Um, I was plucked out and I became a coach. And that same year, I was also placed on what's called the rising star panel. It's like the up and comers within the cult, <laughs> within rank makers. And um, so we were on stage at the very first rank makers live, which is like, I met Julie there. Um, I don't know if you remember meeting, meeting me. I met you in the bathroom. I remember running oh, into you. I remember running, sorry, side note. I remember running into you in the bathroom and be, even though I was like a coach, like I was kind of elevated too, but I was a new coach running into you and thinking like, oh my God, it's Julie Anderson, the celebration Friday girl, you know? Oh, I, I mean, you would have thought I ran into JLo, <laughs> but I still feel like that about you. Yeah. But oh, I was like, I was like, hi, Julie. And you were like, hi, you were probably like, who the hell are you? But anyway, <laughs> um, because we hadn't, I hadn't been on stage yet. Yeah. So anyway, they, they, during, so what they do for the event, and this is done on purpose. This is like a, a large group awareness training tactic where the first day is about community and connection. So they get everybody like feeling really good. And by like the second or third day, they're warming up to the pitch. And so like the last day of the training, they have this rising star panel with all these stories of these people that have made it happen because of Ray, because of rank makers, because of the 100K inner circle coaching. So I was one of those stories. And so we all went through, shared our trauma story and just a little backstory. We had a luncheon with him and one of the uh, people who was running the event. And she went down the line as we're eating our salad and um, asked us all of our stories. And she actually pulled out of us to make it more traumatic. So I shared my story of, you know, before rank makers stuck at a level in my company for four and a half years. But by the end of it, I was saying how I dropped out of law school, how I was in an abusive relationship, how I struggled with alcohol use. And so I shared all that on stage, never talked about any of that in my life, not on a Facebook Live, not in anyone in Arbonne. So I'm up there and, um, and then I had also put a picture of me and Ray on my vision board. I remember this. I remember when you were presenting, I'm like, wow, it came true for her. <laughs> what? No. So they oh, also, no. they wanted me to email them the picture of my vision board. And they put that up there that like I manifested being on stage next to him. And that became part of my story. But anyway, as I'm talking, this was not scripted. I'm just talking. I'm being myself, right? The real true me is coming out. And I'm like, yeah, I was at stuck at a place in my business and I came across this stupid video of Ray. <laughs> and his face when I called him stupid and I went on to say how dumb the video was because it was dumb. He was like dressed up mocking people, really. Um, but it did catch my attention. Anyway, I called him stupid on stage and everybody like it was 
I don't, I guess I, I don't want to say it was like a highlight of the event, but it was kind of like this funny thing that people talked about. Cause I was like, yeah. I saw it's this gone stupid down. video. It's gone, it. it's gone down in rank maker history now, especially all the people that <laughs> have left. Like the what goes on in the DMs are like, oh, I remember when she called him stupid. Like, it's like this shit that goes on in the background that like other people on the outside be like, well, that's not really that funny. Maybe it is, but it's like ex-cult members were like, that's fucking hilarious because you know that really pissed him off. It's <laughs> funny like because... <laughs> No, it's funny because people would literally say, oh, you're the girl that called Ray stupid. <laughs> I'm serious. That's how I was known for a while. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so funny to think about. Like, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh the <laughs> turns tabled. <laughs> <laughs> to help me to do that. So... Um, and of and of course, inner circle too, right? So as soon as I get an idea, it it'll hit where wherever, right? It actually hit when we were trying to get on here, and I actually started making some content, and I have it like paused on my phone. I'm like, ooh! So I started like doing it. I'll be doing it after. This. So I'll start. Like I was having so much. I was making TikToks. That's why I was having so much fun. I was fucking playing. That's why I'm so excited, like a little kid. Like I'm also in a cult. Well, two of them but also i i fucking love tiktok so much and it was like i was free there and it was like exhilarating even though i'd still have to be like reined back in i could fucking play and have so much fun i didn't i could be like my total cringy self and it didn't matter like i was fucking accepted on tiktok for being a nut <laughs> well and you see and your your energy or your personality like whatever you want to say it, it's like intoxicating and I, and that can, maybe that even sounds culty, but it's like, it's your, your high energy. You're excited. You're, you're making me excited, but like, you're still that way. You're still very infectious and people are like, like they just relate to you and it's, it's just super elevated because you're in a, you're in a cult. Like you're just, yeah. you're, you think this is how you're supposed to show up, but that hasn't gone away. You're still so infectious. Right away or i'll write it down i've tried right like i'll write it on scraps of paper or a notebook but i find that i need to have it in front of me because it will just disappear that way so what i found really helpful has been making notes on my phone so i'll put it just on my calendar and i'll just like whatever the time is like say it's 3 p.m i'll just write like this idea for content and then when I'm, like say I'm busy doing something else, then I'll go back to it and then make the content. Or if I have like a whole bunch of ideas at a certain time, I'm like, there's just no way I can do it today. I'll put them, like I'll just write it on the calendar for Saturday and then I'll just like bang it out then. And then, or what I find is like, I have this little app, I think it's called Keep Notes and I'll put it on there. And that's really good too, because then it's on my phone and I'm always on my phone. So I can, you know, <laughs> act on it then. As soon as I get the idea, I pretty much act on it right away except the ideas that i get at like 2 a.m when they wake me up in the night i for sure act on those first thing in the morning and i'll actually write those down on a piece of paper because they seem to be really good like i don't know why <laughs> but those 2 a.m ideas are like okay whatever <laughs> and you guys if you're not if you're not waking up in the middle of the night thinking about content it's okay <laughs> It's okay, but listen, do you, do you want to know why I, well, this is my theory. I could be wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Maybe you've always- Tell us like, your theory. Like once you start, once you just- Please, this, tell us your theory. Uh, yes. You see every, you see almost everything as a piece of content. Yes. So it's like you, you're the, you build that momentum and all of a that's sudden it's just up. like this overflow. It is, of, that's insightful. Because it is, you can start, it, you can, it, it, in a way, mm -hmm. because you're seeing every relationship as transactional and you can start seeing every piece of content as a path to lead eventually to your business. Yep. No matter how yeah. obscure, like how fringe, it all leads back, you know? Yes. Ideas that just come to you. So it starts with taking action and executing yes. on the ideas that you do have and then you will be waking up in the middle of the night with ideas on how to add value to people, right? Oh my God. Because you're amazing. in a cult. Amazing. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Because you're in a cult. Oh my God. 
This is a trip. This is. It's so weird. Fuck, this is wild. Oh, um, yeah, I just wanted people to pick up on the fact that, you know, you you really just execute. <laughs> execute, execute, execute. So let's I, I think know they some picked people up on that. Who <laughs> I think they get it. I think I've said execute like 17 times. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh. Who have heard like you, you share that you do like 15 to 20. Oh my God. That was a snowmobile. Did you hear the snowmobile outside my, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i know you're from canada so you get that but no we'll be able to right by okay anyway why the uh, fuck am i like this this is <laughs> this is horrifying i'm like laughing like that's the funniest fucking thing ever and i remember feeling like it was fucking hilarious like i just i was so happy <laughs> i thought so it was real weird. i thought it was fucking no, it, it felt real. I'm with you. It uh, felt real. Oh, well, you know what? Our friendship was real. So there we got, we got that. Um, so you put out like 15 pieces of content a day. And I know some people are listening to that and they're thinking, oh my God, like how does she have the time to do that? So do you have any tips on that like how that, did you how have the you, time how long? oh my god on you know it, there is something that when you do a lot of when you start prospecting for example you start the more you do the better you get and it's similar to creating content for video form for me anyway i don't want to speak for everybody because it's it's not the same thing some people like to write posts or write a blog but for doing videos I was doing, so I was doing already daily live videos for two years. That was the anniversary. But then I was, I upped it to doing four live videos a day. Plus I was on TikTok having a blast, fucking around, making all these different pieces of content. So just by the sheer volume, you're going to improve and you get faster yeah. at doing it. So when I get an idea, it's not um, as difficult for me to just like bang out the piece of content where it's like, oh, am I concerned about the way it looks? Um, it's going to look better than when I, when I would have started a year ago. Like I don't have to be like double, like, or second guessing, double guessing. I can't even talk like second guessing myself. That's, that's how it's yeah. just, you just get better at it, you know, because I execute. You know, so much. <laughs> and you know, it's funny there too. I, I noticed that I say, some people are wondering, how do you make 15 pieces of content? I was wondering, there's no way I wasn't making 15 pieces of content. I mean, I was doing a ton of stuff. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But like, I think I also had to say that to position like, Julie and I are over here making all this content. And some people are thinking like, how do you do that? As a coach, I could not share that I wasn't doing all the things. You know, like I could never say, I could have never said to you, Julie, I'm not making 15, at least this is how I felt. I'm mm -hmm. not making 15 pieces of content. Um, like, how do you do it? Because I had to show that like I was doing everything. Just like an MLM, like you, even if you're not making six figures, you have to act like you are. Mm -hmm. Even if you've lost rank, even if your whole team quit, even if the pyramid is crumbling, you know, so anyway, I thought it was interesting that I was like, some people are wondering, are probably wondering, I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, like to have this perspective, you know? How long does it take you? Or have you pretty much created like a very streamlined process? It's, it's like how you said, it's totally like how you said, there's like the commitment of just oh, taking fuck. action, of just being consistent. And then it happens. And some days I'll get an idea. So there, it, it, there is some kind of truth to that. And, it, and yeah. it doesn't work for everybody. But I know on TikTok, I would go on and I would just like turn it on. I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I just would, as if I'm going to make a video and I would just play around with the effects or I'd look at a song clip or an audio. And just by doing that, I would have an idea come to me. And I 
uh, some other people have found that advice helpful for them as well. So it's like, but that's it. you being creative. Yeah. Yeah. That's you being creative. Yeah. But reframed as a way to fit in into rank yeah. makers. It's I mean, you're right. so creative, your content. I mean, like I just, if, if nothing else, like you never lost that and you always had it, you just gave it over to yeah. rank maker. I mean, we all did. Yeah. We all I did. Like shit on Facebook. I like making content. I didn't care if I looked like an idiot. Like I really enjoyed it. I still enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure it's like other people get ideas. And it's like, oh my goodness, it takes a long time. Like just, I, I'll write like this essay and I like just feel like I have to write this essay, right? And then other days I'll be like, just have a little, like a little meme, you know, like whatever, I found something and I just share that and that's all it is. So um, my time management, thanks to, especially your coaching has helped me like being able to get the process. There's the edification, eh? This is, this is oh. a good example of how we're, deep we're in at any moment, just to attribute everything, any kind of like, this is so fucking weird. Like this doesn't happen in the real world. It's like, oh, thanks to your coaching. Oh, thanks to rank makers. Oh, thanks to Ray. That's more streamlined, but I, I just do it. I just get it. And I just do it because otherwise it's like the time gets, I, I, I know Ray has said in a training, the time is going to get filled up anyways. So it's like, if you're not doing it, you're going to, you're going to be doing something else. So I just, just do it. But it, it's, I haven't, if somebody said I would be making this much content, like two years ago, I would have thought they're totally crazy. Like, there's no way I'm like, what are you even going to talk about? Right. But it's just exactly like you said, I don't know how it happens. It's just, if you just keep showing up and it just happens. <laughs> Yes, if you just <laughs> keep showing up, it just happens. Yeah. Did somebody write uh, that down? Somebody put that yeah. in the comments. <laughs> Quoting, it's a Julie Anderson original, right? Um, <laughs> I love it. It's so true with everything, with your prospecting, with your follow-up, with your content. I really, <laughs> I really believed that. We both did. It's just like, if you don't think about it, just do it. It's so stupid because I see myself, there's all the, I, I kind of think the reason why I can't speak out what I want to say is because I'm holding things back and trying to find what I'm supposed to say. Trying to yeah. put into words all the things I want to say into the language and format how I'm supposed to say. And I'm so excited. I can't fucking get it out. It's just like, I'll just edify. <laughs> I this know is an honor to be training and to be asked to train. I mean, seriously. It was. I remember feeling like that when the coaches were allowed to do the Ray Dailies. It was like bestowed upon us. Like, um, and it felt like really like, wow, we're trusted to do the Ray Dailies. Mm -hmm. development with your meditation with your prayer whatever your nutrition your fitness all of it if you just keep showing up okay last thing because i know people want to know what results have you gotten since um committing to the content it's like so huge so i've attracted people to me and so I've had conversations that's like right off the get go. Mm. And then I've also, those conversations have led to sales, to customers signing up, to team members signing up. A lot of people um, I've found, they've been watching me and they get to know me. And if they don't like me, then that's cool. But the ones that do, it's like, they feel they really know me because I, they see me every single day. It's the same as like, you know, when you're just watching anybody's video every day or like you, you, you get to know them. And so, um, like it's grown my team, like it's made my business. It's helped me like personally grow, just showing up, um, looking at the world in a different way, like the perspective of service and oh, what I can offer people. Because oh. when you're doing like a live video every day or you're <clears throat> making content every day, you start looking, it's not like, how do I get? It's like, how do I give? Because that's See? the best. I was a good fucking cult member. I fucking ticked you all were. those boxes. Oh, this is so gross content is so you start looking at the, everything everything that you look at like you said it's like oh how can i how can i share this with somebody oh that might help somebody if i just share this you know 
Yeah, documenting. You really are just documenting, not instead of creating. If 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 the word create makes you feel like you have to be this artist or this writer or this photographer, then you know what? I, I this really helped me when I was starting out. Is okay. I don't have to be Picasso. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh you know, um, I can just document what am I doing? And some days that was, what like are you doing? Just, You're yeah. doing fuck all. What are you doing? You're doing fuck all. <laughs> You're not doing, what am I? You're really like, if I would have stopped and asked myself that question, I would have realized I'm not doing anything. <laughs> just make it through like having three kids, raising three kids, but that stuff is relatable, you know? Um, so mm -hmm. however you can do that, just document how you're living your life and show it to people. Like you said, okay. Is there anything that you would like to add to people? Like any four people, is there any insights that we didn't cover that I may have missed or pulled out? Of no, you? I think that's, I, it's just like the taking the action and to, and to take the commitment. Like that one thing that Ray says is like, oh, says there's commitment every there's time like you got to fucking talk of you. This is what it's like. This is so weird. Ray had nothing to do with this. No. And yet both constantly feel the need to it's like ray says or it's like ray always says or it's like what ray teaches yep like listen to us everybody does in rank makers and 100k inner circle we all do this this is a fucking microcosm of what's going on oh god <laughs> <laughs> everything else and it's that's totally true and i'm applying that now to prospecting <laughs> You are. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. How patronizing. I'm oh. sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's it. We reached the end of it. It just cut out right there. So that's oh, it. God. We got we got through it. We did. How do you so, feel? I'm I realized I just asked a Gen Xer how she feels. <laughs> <laughs> got the the sarcastic passive aggressive apathetic <laughs> asshole gen x and what, how would you describe your millennial status anxious condescension <laughs> we're a good team <laughs> <laughs> oh god I, don't, I feel really embarrassed i feel like fuck this is what i look like this is why people thought there was something wrong with me <laughs> but you I mean, a couple of things that at least like were always you again, like that infectious personality that you have, like you're just funny, you're entertaining, you're creative, you have great ideas. Like that is all still there. It's just so it's sad that both of us like we we had to follow this path. We never knew like like that um, analogy that we had talked about from that podcast that I listened to. It's like you're in a maze and you know that there is this end and this end goal and you it appears as though there's no walls and that you're free to roam about and do whatever you want and that all the choices that you make are your own, but yet the walls are actually electrified and everywhere you turn, you're bumping into an electric fence and you're you're getting zapped or you're feeling like, a sense of shame or guilt or regret or like you're not doing enough or you're unworthy like everything you said unless you gave it over to ray mm -hmm. it felt wrong yeah. but then there's also like no clear definition of what right and wrong was because there's tons of contradictions i did it in that training i contradicted myself within like five minutes oh man it's intense seeing it. And it's like the leader of a high control group has these like standards of behavior. Everybody needs to be constantly like um, below and giving like, um, like gratitude. And like, this person is so amazing. And it becomes in a group where it's like, I, I don't know what the word is. It's almost like self 
it's just self-sustaining. Like it's just happening on its own now. So there's the coaches. Yeah. So the coaches are going to correct you through subtle ways. We'll all subtly correct each other to remind you, oh no, you should be saying this way. Or it's like, just like in this previous training. So you'll like get you back on track in all these other ways in order to like bring you back in line. So it's not like you can't say this, you have to do this. It can be, but a lot of the time there's like this, I think this, I'm hoping that this will show people a bit more of what it's like to be part of rank makers, hundred K inner circle coaching and a high control group where this shit's going on. I'm glad we got out. Me too. I'm glad. <laughs> like, I mean, like I said that we, we took our jabs like in our own little conversations with each other. And I hope to be able to show people that like the progression of our friendship throughout this whole thing too, eventually, but at least they get a peek. Like yeah, th this is pretty, con pretty, pretty contrasting like us in that video and us now. And it almost like when you watch it, it's like, we're so excited and so jacked up and so happy and excited and grateful. And I get it. Like it, it think it people who leave and start speaking out, like it appears as though like they're negative or like yeah. they're misguided. And isn't that what Ray called you misguided because you're yes. not no longer on that path. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it, it especially for me, cause if like, I was so fucking jacked up, like my energy, I get jacked up anyway, but that was out of control. Like, and so <laughs> anything where I'm doing now where I'm just like, fuck you or whatever. It's, it's like from 10 to zero, it's got to look that way yeah. to people still in the group. They're like, Oh, why have you made this 180 degrees? I know you've yeah. heard that too from yeah. people in the group, you know, um, Jen, do you have anything that you'd like to say to, I don't know, colleagues that are still in hundred K inner circle coach coaching or rank makers or people who are leaving anything that you'd like to feel like you'd like to say to them? I just, I hope they learn to trust themselves and like, I mean, there's this, it's hard to wake up from this belief that you're really in an empowering situation, but, and you and I have talked about this, it's actually disempowering you because of like this lack of communication. And so for example, I have not communicated with any of the other coaches since I've left for the most part, um, at least not in a very constructive way. And it's because they're being told not to communicate with us. And so I guess what I'd love to say is I'd love to have a conversation with you. I, 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 I'd love to just have a conversation. We don't even have to talk about rank makers or MLM. Um, like, because just like you and I have shown, like our friendship persisted through all of this. And I feel that way about the coaches. I feel like they were my friends and they are my friends. It's just this whole narrative that we shouldn't talk to each other just because we're no longer involved in the same group. It, I mean, it is a red flag that you might be in a high control group or a cult. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, I would just think about that. Like what makes me different? What makes you different? Like we, we, I would love to have a conversation. Like, I don't even want to say conversation because that word's triggering too, because we were told like all of our content, we need to create conversations so then we can convert them into customers. Yeah. Just want to be human with you again. Yeah. Like, that's what I want. Like our true selves without MLM, without rank makers, without Ray looming over us. That's looking, that's what I peering say. around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Seeing you when you're sleeping <laughs> and when you're awake. I you're mean, feeling he is God. God. <laughs> is that, sorry? He is, he is God. He is speaking for God now. So I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. So okay. yeah. yeah, anyway. Well, thank you. I love you, Julie. This. And I love you in a non-culty way. <laughs>
Who's uh, the one on your content that always says, I love you in a culty way? Uh, in a I know there's a, a commenter that always does that and it's fantastic. Yes, I love it. Yeah. It's, love it's cute. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, until next time. Thank you, Jen. And thank, um, you. thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.